Hi there friends, it's me, your boy Derek or Matthew or whatever else you want to call me and I have done two videos like this already before and this will be hopefully the last one before nominations come out. I might do another one after nominations come out. I don't know yet, we'll see what happens. But anyway, so yeah, if you read in the title, this will be my pre-nominations predictions for who's going to get nominated for the 2022 Oscar season. So starting off, I'm gonna start off with best visual effects in which I have Dune, Spider-Man No Way Home, Free Guy, No Time to Die, and Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, some real standouts from this category are Dune. Dune's probably going to sweep a lot of the technical categories, so expect to see that one a lot repeated here. And then Spider-Man No Way Home, I feel like will be the strongest Marvel movie to get representation from the Oscars. Eternals could have had a really big shot, but I feel like the negative reception just kind of dialed that down. So Spider-Man seems to be leading the pack now. Uh, perhaps Shang-Chi could also sneak its way in there, but I also find it very difficult to see that two Marvel movies get in. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you know, it's just, that's the reason. Uh, Black Widow is a little confusing for me as to why it even made the short list, but it's there. So I have No Time to Die, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Matrix Resurrections at 4, 5, and 6. And I feel like either one of them could change, like anyone could be left out of those, but I feel like Free Guy, Spider-Man, and Dune are like kind of the locks for this category. Moving on to best sound, I have Dune, Belfast, West Side Story, Power of the Dog, and No Time to Die. I think No Time to Die and Spider-Man No Way Home are kind of like in this weird sort of limbo position where like either one of them could be a major awards player, but also could completely miss out, except for but I mean, No Time to Die is a stronger contender than No Way Home. You'll notice that I'll repeat a lot of like Dune, West Side Story, Belfast, and Power of the Dog because they're big technical awards players as well as the big awards players, so that will boost their chances at winning Best Picture. Tick Tick Boom could also have a really strong standing within this category. It's kind of been like a weird limbo phase. And then the other three just kind of have no real shot. Maybe Last Night in Soho, maybe. Okay, now moving on to Best Editing. We have Dune, Belfast, Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up in West Side story again the same four that I mentioned earlier but switch out what did I switch out I switched out no time to die for don't look up I feel like don't look up could have a very strong standing in this category because the editing was very jumpy and it was very obviously there tick tick boom also could have a chance at getting in here I'm not too entirely sure see when I think of tick tick boom's editing I mainly think of the song therapy that was in the movie and that has like masterful perfect editing so I think that's like, if they were to submit something for editing, put that in. But yeah, the other four, Dune, Belfast, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, again, you'll hear a lot of them within these technical categories. So don't worry. For best original song, I have So Maybe Start from Annette, Dos Orguitas from Encanto, Be Alive from King Richard, Just Look Up from Don't Look Up, and No Time to Die from No Time to Die. The only locks in these category are the three I have at the top. Beyonce, Ariana Grande, and Billie Eilish are like definitely going to get nominated for these songs. By the way, I mentioned them, I like, I, I hopefully you understand that I'm numbering them in terms of how likely they are to get nominated and probably how likely they are to win. No Time to Die just being a number one. Did she win at the Golden Globes? I'm, I'm not too entirely sure, but she won something. Dos Arigitas is an interesting case because it isn't really the right song. I mean, it is the right song to submit for the Oscars because it's very much an Oscars type song, but it's not the popular one. It's no Let It Go. You get what I mean? The Let It Go of Encanto would be uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno, which I think would have had a really, a stronger, stronger chance at getting nominated and perhaps even winning at the Oscars. But since that's the song that was not submitted, then Dos Orguitas just seems a little weaker. I'm not saying Dos Orguitas is a bad song. It's a very, very good song, very underrated actually. But you know, it just does not have a stronger standing as do the other songs. I, so I feel like the top three are locks and then Encanto is sort of a lock. I'm not too entirely sure. But number five is a complete wild card spot. And the only reason why I put Annette there was because <laughs> I don't know, maybe I have personal bias, but it's the only song I like from that movie. 
and the rest just don't seem as strong enough to really get in there. I think Gary Van Hansen definitely is not getting nominated, though I would I don't even know how I made the short list. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on with Dear Van Hansen. But yeah, I'm gonna leave a net there just because I hope for it to make it in. Moving on to Best Original Score, we have Dune, The Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and The French Dispatch. Back to the technical categories. We only have two out of the four that have been reoccurring. We only have Dune and Power of the Dog. Belfast, I'm surprised, did not really make the short list, so... I don't, I don't really remember the score of Belfast either way, so it's fine. And then West Side Story does not have an original score, so it can't really like fit into this category. Dune and Power of the Dog are definite locks at this point. I don't know who else it would be. Don't Look Up has a fantastic, fantastic score that I feel like needs to be talked about a little bit more. Uh, French Dispatch will probably make it in. It'll probably be its only nomination if it does get any. And then Tragedy and Macbeth just seems to be there. Spencer and Encanto could definitely switch out with Tragedy and Macbeth and French Dispatch, but I, it's a little blurry with the lines there. Now moving on to best makeup and hairstyling, I have West Side Story, Dune, House of Gucci, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and Cruella. West Side Story and Dune are the locks in here. And then the other three just seem to be complete wild cards, but you know, I kind of have personal bias, so that's why I put them that high. No Time to Die could perhaps make it in. I'm not too entirely sure. I wish I knew. And then the Suicide Squad is really high. It's like borderline on there because it the first movie like actually won the Oscar from before, which is just completely wild to me. House of Gucci, the strongest case it has going for it is Jared Leto's transformation, Eyes of Tammy Faye, the strongest case is Jessica Chastain's transformation. And then, you know, I honestly feel like Cruella is just gonna get in there just because. You get what I mean? It's just gonna sneak its way right in. For best costume design, I have Cruella, Dune, West Side Story, House of Gucci, and Nightmare Alley. I think the only real locks in this category are Cruella, Dune, and West Side Story, and I know that I'm banking really hard on Cruella. I'm probably the only person who thinks it's a lock, but Disney's putting up a really good campaign, an FYC campaign for uh, costuming. So I'm very impressed, and I think that the Academy will actually hear what they say and go along with it because the costuming in Corolla is top notch. And then House of Gucci and Nightmare Alley, I'm not too confident on them making it in. House of Gucci specifically, like if House of Gucci gets a Best Picture nomination, then it probably is going to get costume design, but it's just hard to read what the Academy thinks of House of Gucci. It's hard to read what anyone thinks of House of Gucci all because of SAG and making it into Best Ensemble. Uh, Serrano could make it in, but I don't really see much chance for the other ones I have in my alternative list. What is it called? Alternative? I don't know. For Best Cinematography, I have West Side Story, Dune, Power of the Dog, Belfast, and Tragedy and Macbeth. Again, the same four that are gonna probably sweep most of the technical categories. And then I added in Tragedy and Macbeth because the cinematography in there is amazing. And I hope the Academy recognizes that. Nightmare Alley could make it in, but either way, I feel like it's just between the two of them, just because it's unsure of which one of them will get a Best Picture nomination. They both could very well get Best Picture, but at the same time, they both could also be shut out. So it's just a little difficult to read how the Academy is feeling on that. You know, I find it weird that Dune, I don't like that Dune is at kind of the top of all of these technical lists because I don't like the movie. So I kind of hope West Side Story is able to edge it out like for all the categories. So for best production design, we have Dune, West Side Story, Nightmare Alley, Power of the Dog, and Tragedy and Macbeth. Again, the same four except I left out Belfast. It's kind of like right on the edge. Uh, Tragedy and Macbeth and Belfast and Nightmare Alley, they're a little bit rough on like who's gonna go where. It's all confusing. It's hard to read the situation. I haven't seen Nightmare Alley. I have seen Tragedy and Macbeth. 
Tragedy and Macbeth has great production design and I hear Nightmare Alley does too. I think Belfast also has great production design. Maybe Power of the Dog could get shut out. Like maybe I'm putting them in the wrong order, but we never know. We'll never know. If you notice, The Last Duel seems to be getting, or The Last Duel and Spencer seem to be getting like the number nine in 10 spots in a lot of these categories. And they're kind of just filler at this point. It, there's no real chance they're going to make it in. Unfortunately, I really liked The Last Duel. Didn't really like Spencer. And Serrano as well is just like a complete wild card. It could get a lot of the technical categories as well but it does not seem to have any more Best Picture chances, and Peter Dinklage is its strongest nomination point. Moving on to Best International Feature, I have Flea from Denmark, A Hero from Iran, The Hand of God from Italy, The Worst Person of the World from Norway, and Drive My Car from Japan. Drive My Car is most likely the winner of this category. It does even have the potential to get a nomination for Best Picture, though I kind of doubt it. Personally, I would like I'm Your Man to be a little bit higher, but that's just not the case. Flea seems a little bit, it's debatable on whether it can make it in because it most likely is getting in for animated feature, but I just don't know about documentary. Like it could get one or the other, it could get animated international and documentary, huh? I don't know, it's it's weird. I think SAG only nominated it for one. I don't think, or it was the Golden Globes. The Golden Globes did not nominate it. It's weird. I don't remember, I have the worst memory. <laughs> but yeah, the worst person in the world in the hand of God seemed to be near locks. And then a hero, yeah, okay. <laughs> I haven't seen it, that's why. For best animated feature, we have The Mitchells vs. The Machines, Ryan the Last Dragon, Luca, Flea, and Encanto. Encanto is most likely to win in this situation. I would be surprised if it didn't, specifically because it is Disney. Who won last year was Soul. I feel like uh, like Disney and Pixar, they kind of switch off every year with like Spider-Verse being thrown in there or something. The Mitchells vs. The Machines could definitely have a shot at winning, though I think it is kind of a long shot. <laughs> but yeah, it seems to be a year dominated by Disney and Pixar, which I'm not upset about because all three movies from them were very, very good. I'm very impressed. The Boss Baby Family Business is right on the edge because it did get a nomination. I don't know if it won, I don't think it won, but it did get, a, the first movie did get a nomination a few years ago. So, you know, it very well could happen. Anything could happen. And see Oscar. And then also Summit of the Gods does just not have the traction that it needed to get nominated. Same thing with Vivo. Sing 2 just seems to be a major financial success, so it's kind of not really an awards player. And then Ron's Gone Wrong is there. For best adapted screenplay, I have Coda, The Lost Daughter, Dune, West Side Story, and The Power of the Dog. I think all of them are like definite locks except for Coda. I just did not know who to put in that fifth spot. Nightmare Alley could make it in, but I feel like Coda kind of needs this nomination in order for it to be a strong contender and best picture because it can't just rely on Troy Kotzer, even though I'm not even sure Troy Kotzer will make it in. But yeah, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Dune and The Lost Daughter seem to be definite locks. Dune could be a little bit flimsy, but I'm still thinking it's gonna make it in. Something that would, that would not surprise me if it made it in there would be passing. It, it seems like it could make it in, but I just, I'm not too sure. Okay, for best original screenplay, I have King Richard, Being the Ricardos, Don't Look Up, Belfast, and Licorice Pizza. The three, the top three, Licorice Pizza, Belfast, and Don't Look Up are definite locks at this point. Being the Ricardos is a little rough. It's a little rough, but I feel like it's going to need this nomination as well if it wants to get a Best Picture nomination. I'm not too entirely sure. I, it's Aaron Sorkin, so I feel like he has a really good shot just because he is Aaron Sorkin. I personally did not care for the writing in Being the Ricardos, but that's just me. And then King Richard seems to be filler. It needs a nomination as well, because it can't just rely on Will Smith for a Best Picture nomination. It just cannot. It needs something else. Okay, so for Best Supporting Actress, we have Ruth Nega for Passing, Anjanu Ellis for King Richard, Catriona Balf for Belfast, Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog, and Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. Ariana DeBose is like a near, no. Ariana DeBose is 
probably going to win. So I'm pretty sure she's locked. Uh, I feel like, is it Balfe? Balf? I'm not too entirely sure, I feel bad. But Catriona Balf and Kirsten Dunst and Anjanu Elvis are also near locks at this point. I think they all have really strong cases going for them, so they're pretty safe. But passing, making it in here is just a little, a little confusing. I'm not too entirely sure. Kate Blanchett could have a really strong standing at the Oscars out of nowhere for Nightmare Alley, especially because Nightmare Alley needs like some above the line categories in, in order to warrant a Best Picture nomination. But I'm not too entirely sure. I think Kate Blanchett was nominated somewhere. I think it might've been sad, but I wish my memory was good. I wish. Okay, so for Best Supporting Actor, I have Jared Leto, Ciaran Hines, Ben Affleck, Troy Kotzer, and Cody Smith McPhee. Same thing as Ariana DeBose, Cody Smith McPhee is probably most likely to win in this category, so he seems to be pretty locked in there. Troy Kotzer and Ben Affleck all of a sudden started getting nominated in a bunch of other award circles, like randomly, and so that's why I think that's why I think they're probably going to get nominated in here as well. Like they came out of nowhere. Uh, the Belfast guys, I don't know if either of them will get nominated. I think Siren Hines is definitely stronger than Jamie Dornan, although I don't personally believe so. That's just the way that the award season has been going as of late. And you know, both of them could actually end up getting shut out, but also both of them could actually even make it in. It's just a little confusing on what's going to happen. And then it seems like one of the most controversial ones right now is Jared Leto for House of Gucci. I think he did a really good job and I think a nomination would be great for him because he did a good job. But a lot of people disagree. Um, there's a lot of will they, won't they with Jared Leto and like his nomination. It's a little confusing. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. This is a really, really close race. Like really close. And it's just hard to do a top five. Well, it's easy for me to do top five because I would do a different top five. But like this top five on who's actually going to make it in is pretty crowded. Also, Mike Feist for West Side Story could randomly just surprise out of nowhere. Like the Oscars could be like a big West Side Story fan and then they could end up just sweeping a lot of the awards. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mike Feist could make it in. Okay, for best lead actress, I have Alana Haim for Licorice Pizza, Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter, Lady Gaga for House of Gucci, Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and Nicole Kidman for Being the Ricardo. This is probably the most difficult category out of all of them. It, no, it definitely is. There were so many strong leading female performances this year, and so it just is a little, a little difficult to decide who's actually going to make the top five. I don't, I don't envy the Academy voters in this situation. I think positions five through seven on my list, so Lana Heim for Licorice Pizza, Kristen Stewart for Spencer, and Rachel Zegler for West Side Story all seem to be, they could all make the last spot. I feel like the top four are pretty near locks. <laughs> I hope, I don't know, that's the thing. Like anyone could be switched out for anyone. Olivia Coleman's not that strong, I don't think. I think, you know what, now I'm gonna say, the only lock is Nicole Kidman. Ugh, that doesn't feel right, that doesn't feel right with me. The only lock could be Nicole Kidman. I don't know, I want Jessica Chastain to be a lock, I want Lady Gaga to be a lock, but they just, I don't know, any one of them could be switched out. Rachel Zegler had a pretty strong showing at the Golden Globes. And I know that the Golden Globes aren't like, they don't have as much power as they used to have, but they still do have significant power. Kristen Stewart could be shut out like overall. And she used to be like the number one of all the lists everywhere until SAG came around and she wasn't even mentioned. It's just a really difficult situation. I I don't know what to do. I personally, I would give it to Rachel Zegler, but Alana Haim does give a really good performance and I feel like she, maybe like Alana Haim and Rachel Zegler both make it in and who would be taken out? Maybe Olivia Coleman or Lady Gaga, honestly. 
Jessica Chastain also does not have strong ground either. It's uh, so difficult. Nicole Kidman winning out of nowhere just threw everything out of the water. Okay, so for best lead actor, I have Being the Ricardos, Javier Bardem, The Tragedy in Macbeth, Denzel Washington, Tick Tick Boom, Andrew Garfield, The Power of the Dog, Benedict Cumberbatch, and King Richard Will Smith. This seems to be a lot easier than the other categories. The top four are pretty much locks at this point because they've just been getting nominated everywhere else. As for who's gonna win, very strong competition between the top three. Um, Andrew, but I think Will Smith is going to win. And then for that fifth spot, I think it's either between Peter Dinklage for Serrano or Javier Bardem for being the Ricardos. And I, the reason why I chose Bardem over Dinklage is just because uh, Bardem was nominated at SAG. And also he seemed to have, like being the Ricardo seems to just have like a weird random boost from everyone. I don't know how it's making it in, but it's making it in. And so I just, I'm giving a little more edge to being the Ricardos just because I feel like it is an underdog player, even though it is kind of like not liked. You get what I mean? Okay, so for best director, we have Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza, Denny Villeneuve for Dune, Steven Spielberg for West Side Story, and Jane Campion for The Power of the Dog. Pretty much all five are locks. Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm 95% confident. Paul Thomas Anderson and Kenneth Branagh could get edged out by another director. I don't know which one, but you know, I, I feel like all five of them are pretty strong. I think, I think. They seem to have their solid ground. They got it at the Golden Globes. They feel like they got it at SAG. So uh, maybe Maggie Gyllenhaal was in there. I don't remember. But either way, those five seem to be near locks. I think the top three are definite locks, but the last two are pretty much locks. And now onto the final category, the big one, best picture. I'll cover the top 10. We have being the Ricardos, Tick Tick Boom, Don't Look Up, Coda, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Dune, Belfast, West Side Story, and The Power of the Dog. So again, we have our top four technical movies that are making the top four spots in here. Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Belfast, and Dune. Probably, like, definitely going to get nominated for Best Picture. I, yeah, just definitely. Um, as for who's going to win, it's, it's kind of just between The Power of the Dog and West Side Story now. I gotta be honest. Probably Power of the Dog is winning. West Side Story is pretty good. I just, I don't know if it will win. And then Belfast used to be a lot stronger though. It is getting weaker and weaker at each awards ceremony. Licorice Pizza and King Richard also seem to be pretty much safe in this category. I would also probably add Don't Look Up to there as well. Coda and Tick Tick Boom seem to be surprise contenders. I don't know how they came in, but they came in and they're making a show. Some people are doubting Tick Tick Boom. I'm not gonna doubt it. I, I have faith that Tick Tick Boom will make it in and I'm gonna manifest it. I don't love Tick Tick Boom, but I feel like it needs to be there. And then for that last spot, number 10, I edged out Nightmare Alley and Tragedy and Macbeth for being the Ricardos because Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem they have potential to get nominated. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe not being the Ricardos. I mean, House of Gucci could make it in. It randomly made it in for SAG. It's just a whole lot of, I don't know. I really don't know what they're gonna, oh, look at me literally changing my answer right now. But you know what, I'm strong in my top nine. <laughs> And then that 10 spot is just anyone's pick. Nightmare Alley, Tragedy, and Macbeth being the Ricardo's House of Gucci. It could go to any one of them. Even Drive My Car. But I don't, I don't feel like it. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home and No Time to Die are also kind of long shots. They're like, they have a storyline of saving cinema during the pandemic. But at the same time, I just don't think that they're that strong. I, like, they're not Oscars contenders. 
And then the last three have virtually no chance of getting in. <laughs> but yeah, I'm confused on who that 10th spot is gonna go to. So, but I'm putting B and the Ricardos there for now, just because. Ah, uh, no. I mean, it'll probably get original screenplay. It will definitely get lead actress. And then lead actor, it also has a chance at. And I feel like in a, if you're gonna get all three of those, you might as well get a Best Picture nomination. But yeah, those are my updated predictions for the 2022 Oscar seasons before the nominations come out. Hopefully this video comes out before the nominations video comes out. Um, stay tuned, I might do a reaction video to that, their announcement. And then I also, what else am I doing? That's it. Oh, I might do like a who's gonna win, who's not gonna win, blah, 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 blah. Who knows? We'll see what I do. That's next week. I'm filming this a week ago. Today's the 1st of February, it's the 31st of January. So watch my predictions totally change by next week. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I'm glad you like to listen to what I have to say, even though it means nothing at all. And I'll see you all next time, whenever next time is. Goodbye.